So most people don't have to be told the importance of good money management. However, being responsible with your money, it does involve more than just paying your bills on time. It also involves keeping some of what you earn so you can prepare for the future and save up for big purchases. But there are many different types of saving solutions. And a question that I get asked often is, what type of account is the best one to have? Now, some people do have their favorites, but honestly, the best savings account for your money will really depend on your goals for the money that you put into this account. So in today's video, we're gonna look at four different savings options and we're gonna break down how these accounts work, the pros and cons of each, and when these accounts make sense. So the first item on our list is a regular savings account. And this is an account that most people are familiar with because for a lot of people, this was probably the first account they opened as a child, a teenager, or a young adult. And because they're so accessible, you can pretty much walk into any local bank or credit union Union and open an account in person or online. And these accounts are a great place to keep cash that you don't need for living expenses. Some people like to keep all of their money in their checking account, but I think that is a big mistake, especially if you have a problem with impulse control, because many checking accounts are tied to debit cards. And if you keep so much cash in your checking, there's a tendency to overspend and not save anything. So I always recommend only keeping what you need for bills and checking and maybe a small cushion and then keeping the rest of your money in savings. Now, as far as the pros and cons, again, one benefit is that it does provide a safe place for your cash. And I don't know if anyone still does this, but if you know someone who's a little old school, they might prefer keeping their savings account under the mattress or maybe in a shoebox. The problem with this approach though, is that it offers absolutely no protection against loss or damages. But on the other hand, if you keep your money in the bank, most savings accounts will insure your funds up to a certain amount. Also, regular savings accounts are usually with local banks and credit unions. So if you have an emergency, you'll also have quick access to to your money. And of course, another benefit of a savings account is the opportunity to earn interest on your money. But the downside to a regular savings account is just that it's regular. So even though you can earn interest, you're not going to earn a lot compared to what you could get with another type of savings account. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that some regular savings accounts do have a monthly service fee. But the good news is that several banks do offer ways for you to avoid this fee. But even though a regular savings doesn't earn a lot, these accounts are perfect for holding a small emergency fund or funds that you plan to use in the near future. So the second item on our list is a high yield savings account. And these are very similar to or regular savings, they serve a similar purpose, and that it's a safe place to keep funds that you don't need for living expenses. The difference though, is that you typically find high yield savings accounts with online banks. The biggest benefit of a high yield savings account is that you can earn a higher rate compared to a regular savings. Now at the moment, savings rates are pretty low across the board, but while many regular accounts still only earn about 0.01%, Currently, there are a lot of high yield accounts that are earning about 0.40% or maybe 0.55%. And around the same time last year, a lot of those same high yield accounts were earning about 1.30%. So there's definitely an opportunity to grow your money faster, plus your funds are insured. Now, another big difference between this account and a regular savings is the accessibility of your funds. As I mentioned, many high yield savings accounts are with online banks. And because of this, a lot of these accounts not all, but some don't come with a debit card. Now, because a lot of these accounts don't include debit cards, some people might consider that a con. Personally, I think it's a pro because not being able to get to your funds quickly is how you're able to keep money in savings. Now, of course, you can transfer funds from your high yield account to your regular bank account at any time, but it usually takes about two days for a transfer to complete, which is why I say it's so important to keep a small emergency fund in a regular savings account. And there's so many options for a high yield savings account, such as Varro, Discover, Ally, American Express. However, you have to shop around because accounts do vary, but you'll find that many banks do not have any opening deposit requirements, some don't charge a monthly service fee, and some don't have minimum balance requirements. Now, one online account that I do like is CIT Bank's Savings Builder account, and I'll link to it in the description if you wanna check it out. But this account is a little different because it does require a minimum opening 
deposit of $100, plus you have to deposit at least $100 into your account every month in order to keep the higher rate. Some people do not like that requirement. However, if you're having a problem with discipline and sticking with your savings goals, that requirement, it can add a layer of accountability, which can keep you consistent. Now, because a high yield savings account is less accessible, it is a great place to keep the majority of your emergency fund. So if you have $5,000 in an emergency fund, you might keep one or $2,000 in your regular savings for an everyday emergency, and then move the rest of your money to a high yield account. And along with your emergency cash, you can also use these accounts for your down payment fund or maybe your sinking funds account. So the third item on our list is a money market account, and these are interest bearing accounts that are similar to other savings solutions, and they're also available at many banks and credit unions. The rate on these accounts are determined by current rates in the money markets, which trade short term loans. And what's interesting about this account is that it's a hybrid of a savings account and a checking account. So it's a place to safely stash your cash, but you're also allowed to write a limited number of checks from the account each month. Now, one benefit of a money market account is that you will earn more compared to a regular savings. However, the rates are typically the same or only slightly higher than a high yield savings account. And because they come with a card and check writing abilities, you can access funds quicker than a high yield savings account, which can be either a pro or con depending on what you prefer. But even though you're able to write checks on this account, keep in mind that it's still a savings product. So you're limited to six checks per month without penalty. And another thing to keep in mind is that these accounts typically do have higher opening deposit requirements. And those requirements, it can be as high as $1,000 or $2,500 depending on the bank. And this account makes sense for people who like the idea of having a card and check writing abilities but it might not be the best solution if you have a problem with impulse control and you think that you might dip into the account too much unnecessarily. So the final item on our list is a certificate of deposit, also known as a CD. And I've gotten so many questions about these accounts over the years. It's also a type of savings account, but it differs from the other accounts on our list because it's a time deposit. So it's a more restrictive form of saving. Basically, you open an account with a financial institution, choose a term, whether it's six months, 12 months, or five years, and your money will then stay in the CD until the end of the term. And because you're locking your money away, these accounts earn a higher savings rate. Now, one benefit of this solution is that there's also the option of a fixed rate CD. So you don't have to worry about your rate changing like it would with other savings products. CDs are also low risk, so you can expect to get back the investment you put in plus any interest earned, Plus, you can choose your CD term, so these are ideal for both short-term and long-term goals. But although CD rates are higher than regular savings accounts, they're not always that much higher than a money market or a high yield account where you don't have to lock your money away. Now, the obvious downside is that with your money in a CD, it's unavailable until the end of your term, and if you touch it sooner, you might have to pay a penalty. Also, some CDs do require a minimum opening deposit between $500 and $1,000. A certificate of deposit can be a really great tool if you just cannot keep any money in savings or if you don't trust yourself not to make impulse withdrawals. But you should only open an account if you are absolutely certain that you will not need this money until the end of the term. A CD is also great if you're setting cash aside for something particular. For example, maybe you have a down payment fund but you're not ready to buy a house yet. By putting the money in the CD, it's less accessible and you don't risk spending the money. Now a question that might come up is whether or not a CD is a great place for an emergency fund. And that's really a call that you have to make. I know me personally, I don't think it's the best place because if something comes up, you want to be able to get to your money within a couple of days and not have to pay a penalty. So that's all that I have for you guys today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. Here we talk a lot about personal finance. So if you like videos like this, I do post every weekend and sometimes during the week. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days. Thank you.